Okay, so in the previous video, we looked at one application for a video sharing database, and that was for like an internal organizational training site. So basically, no bells or whistles, just a list of all the videos and that you simply click on them and play them. So we're going to look at a different application this time. Now, it's still going to be embedded within uh, uh, the database itself. So we're going to use a form as opposed to a video. But what it's going to show us is it's going to show how to uh, track certain additional functionality, like tracking views and tracking likes and things like that. So let's take it one at a time. Let's go to our training videos table we're going to go to design we're going to add a new video uh, excuse me a new um, field so video underscore views and this one is going to be a number so the first one is a short text second one's a hyperlink third one's an OE object and so this is a new type this is a number pretty self-explanatory it's going to store a value that can be increased, decreased, that kind of thing. And again, we're using the naming convention of the word video, prefacing the field name. And we're using a word that is potentially protected, so uh, you don't ever want to just do view. You want to make sure it's part of a larger word. And like I said, it's okay to use a word that's protected if it's part of a larger name. That's not an issue. It's just if it's standalone, like if it's just name or just path. That's where the problem occurs. Okay, so we uh, save it. And now, in the video views, set these to zero. We can close that. And again, the reason why it asked to save that second time isn't because I entered values, it's because I changed the width of the column. So as soon as you enter a value, that's it, you've made the change. It's if you change something structurally that they, it prompts you for, for uh, to save the uh, object. Okay, so what we're about to do is going to seem a little redundant because we're going to basically recreate the report, but in the form of a form. So create blank form. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of this and this, because I like navigation controls to be customized. I like them to be like larger and salient. The button should actually say, uh, you know, next record or whatever, next page, rather than having these kind of um, antiquated uh, left and right uh, arrows. So let's first set what the data source for this form is just like we did with the report so let's go to design property sheet and again make sure the form itself as a whole is selected and the data is going to be training videos now what we're going to do is rather than putting the actual fields at least we're going to put some fields on the form but some of them we're going to embed into other objects. So here is a combo box, sometimes referred to as a drop-down box. In fact, occasionally I believe it's um, in VB in Excel, there's a command that refers to a drop-down box. So, you know, even Microsoft gets confused whether it's a combo box or a drop-down box. So we'll click on it. We'll just map out how large we want it to be. Now you have three choices. When we set the data source, okay, if we hadn't done that, we'd only have the top two choices. Because we set a data source, we have this third choice, and that's the one we want. Find a record on my form based on the value I select. So when you select something here, it will change other values or other fields that will be on the form in a minute. We want the video name to be listed in the drop-down box, combo box. Widen this because... Even if you make the combo box itself wider, the image, or should I say the text, will be cut off if this isn't wide enough. Not sure why they do that. And video name. Okay, now just so you know, the text here that's displayed is not the actual name of the field, or the object, I should, the object is actually video underscore name underscore label. The reason why I'm pointing that out is you can make this more user-friendly. You can just type this out as video name, 
and it does not violate the rule that I mentioned about avoiding spaces because the space is just in the um, the caption so how it says caption video name so that's okay for the caption to have a space you just don't want the object itself to have a space okay so let's save this because even though it's not going to do much I want to show you how this works so we save it it wants a name we'll call this video underscore frm just as the other one was video underscore report or rpt click on view and here's the way the drop down box works dig dug and hit an object so the two are now listed there and i forgot to take care of these i said i was going to and then i didn't so let's quickly do that so um make sure this is highlighted here format uh, turn that to no so record selection record selectors no and navigation buttons no let's run it again and now they're gone so my apologies i mentioned that and then got distracted So now you've seen how to create a drop-down box that has another field as the data source. Now, what we're going to do is we want to put other fields on this because, as we said, when we click on this, it will change the corresponding fields. So if we go to Add uh, Existing Fields, and again, this is under the Design tab, let's put in Video Path. Just like the report, we're not going to show this to the it oops sorry didn't mean to delete that we're not going to show it to the end user it's there because we need data from it and this is a really easy way of getting that data so we'll just shrink it because no one's going to see it if you want you can test you can before we make this invisible let's just do this we'll save it view it and just want to confirm that this works so dig dug there's dig dug Hidden object, there's hidden object. So it's definitely working. All right, so now we can shrink it. And just like we did in the video report, we're going to make it invisible. Format tab, visible, change this to no. Okay, so what's next? Now let's add that new video views we added. So this is going to track how many times the video has been watched and display that information for the end user, just like you'd see on a site like YouTube. And lastly, we need a button that actually triggers the plane of the video, just like we did for the report. So you can cancel out of this. You can change the caption. And again, just like the caption here, changing the caption does not change the name of the button. So we'll just type out click to play. And again, since it is a caption, you can use spaces. It's not the actual name of the object. I'm sorry if I keep repeating that, but I've had people ask me very explicitly, gee, why, do you, why don't you use spaces? So I kind of want to make sure that I'm saying it in the videos. All right, so for this, we are going to change the name of it. So rather than being command form, we'll call this um, play underscore button underscore frm so it's the play button but it's the one that's on the form that way if we see it pop up in the vb uh script we'll know which one is which okay so we're going to click on that again and we want something happened well we want an event to occur on click just like we did with the video report we're going to have some code occur and you can go ahead and open up the report here code and you can just copy and paste it because it'll work exactly the same way because this isn't really specific to the report this is just saying uh run the application that's at this link and here it is well me dot video path is still valid because me again refers to in this case the form that the script is attached to and the video path is a legitimate um uh, field that is on that form so you can just go ahead and paste it in here close that save it again so now 
the basic should work. We click on the drop down box, the combo box, and then we click this, it should play the right video. So let's choose Dig Dug, click to play, you get the normal notification, and there's Dig Dug. Click on Hidden Object, click to play, notification, and Hidden Object. So this is working exactly as we want to. And again, like I said, we kind of had to reinvent the wheel because of the limitations of, of the report. So using the form, we kind of had a, a start, I don't want to say from scratch because we're still using the underlying table. And the functionality is very similar. It's just uh, rewriting the code for this specific um, object. But as you saw, a lot of it was, was similar. We created a button, copy and pasted the code, that kind of thing. All right, so that basically gets us back up to speed. Now what we can do is now we can modify this video views field. So what happens is when you click on the button, you want this to be incremented by one. Now you'd have to be careful because people can like spam a button. They could just hit it over and over and over again and then uh, make the number artificially high. Again, this is the basics. This is just to show you how the basic functionality works. Companies like YouTube have spent years trying to figure out what is considered a legitimate view. Does it play five seconds? Does it play 10 seconds? This is just getting your feet wet, getting the idea of how this works. And when you get right down to it, this is really data entry because when the user clicks on the button, they're changing a value in an underlying table. Therefore, they've done data entry. They just don't realize they've done it. Okay, so we have the button highlighted. And we have event. We already have that set out from a few seconds ago. So if we go back in there, we're going to make another addition. We're going to say me, and we're going to say video views is equal to me dot video views. In other words, it is equal to itself plus one. So pretty straightforward. Take its current value and add one to it. Save that, close that, save that, and this should now work. So let's choose Dig Dug, click to play, and as you can see, it increased to one. We do OK. It's playing like it should. Now let's open, let's close the form and open the table because the table might not have updated until the form closes. Uh, you have to be careful about when a value updates. It's easy enough to put in extra code to make it update immediately. And there it is. So just like that, you now are tracking how many views a video has. And again, it's very preliminary because someone could just be mashing on that play button over and over again to try to drive up the views. But now you're seeing how what the user does actually modifies the underlying information in the table. So I think that's going to be about it for this video. I kind of want to have each video focus on just one additional functionality. Uh, something else that we can do in another video is would be the likes. Now, since it tracks likes and dislikes, you'd probably actually have two columns, one for likes, one for dislikes and a button to do that. Uh, something else would be maybe a restriction setting. YouTube has a uh, setting that um, will restrict certain content and there's uh, certain flags and so forth that determine what that content is. Again, big ball of wax that we can't really tackle uh, in this type of tutorial, but we can show you the, the basics of having um, at least some kind of setting for the uh, for the video. So what happens, you would add a column, that column would have a value. Maybe it would just be yes or no. Restricted yes, restricted no. And depending on the login user's restriction setting, if they're set to yes, do restricted content, then everything shows. If they say no, then only the stuff that's considered not restricted shows, that kind of thing. I don't want to get too much into that because like I said, those are really different lessons. Uh, this really is all I want to cover in this one is the idea of selecting the video. And then when you click on play, it updates the uh, views. So I think that's about it for this one. Obviously this looks terrible. Uh, you wouldn't 
uh, really you wouldn't uh, have this be uh, user facing. You'd probably actually, you know, like YouTube has a thumbnail and we do have the thumbnail uh, option as we demonstrated in uh, the report that you can have a thumbnail when it gets clicked on it uh, does the same thing it plays the video so certainly that is a possibility but before I get into that we eventually have to look at uploading and that's still a little bit further away I'm still trying to uh, show you guys the different ways that you could actually display this information so I want to keep with this theme for a couple more videos where like I said, I think likes and dislikes will do in the next video, and then maybe a restricted setting. Uh, but to do a restricted setting, obviously you then at that point have to have some kind of user settings. Right now there isn't any kind of user login, there isn't any kind of profile, it's just everyone sees everything. Okay, so I think that's about it for this one.